Today I would like to analyze one clinical case using our software, Vision. This patient, due to the absence of two teeth, has the upper dentition shifted to the right, second class on the left side. On the right side, there is also a second class shift. The plan is that we will distalize this segment, these five teeth, by placing the canine in the dentition. Since the patient does not have the opportunity to place crowns and make a restoration. Also, we want to align the center line by using the spaces we have on the left side of the maxilla and using separations. And in the process of creating a setup, I will show the different types of tools that can be used to do this. First, we will try to align the lower canine to the right by distalizing the lower right segment. When clicking on a tooth, we get a gizmo with six degrees of freedom. Thus, we can move the teeth in all six planes. When we move a tooth, at the moment when the tooth starts to go into another tooth, an indicator automatically appears where we see the value of the collision. The moment we click on one of the gizmo arrows and start moving the tooth, we see the tilde sign. This means that at the moment of movement, we see the approximate value of the collision. After we release the mouse, an accurate calculation of the distance occurs. The value may vary plus or minus from the one that we see in the approximate measurement. There are several colors for the distance indicators. When red, it means that we are in collision. This is a negative distance. I forgot to say that when you press this button, we see all the spaces, all distances between the teeth. In blue, we indicate positive distances. And also, the third state of the indicator is when we have a red square. The red square means that if we do a separation here, it will not be valid. It means that the system will not allow separation since the program sets a limit on the separation value greater than 0.9. The program also sets a limit on the angles under which separation will be done. If the missile and distal surfaces are not in contact, separation will not occur. At the moment, we need to move five teeth. One more thing about the gizmo. This is the location of the rotation center. By default, it is the center of the crown of each tooth so that we relocate and move the crown part. Here it is possible to use different variations of the gizmo. We currently have six degrees of freedom enabled. We can enable only linear translations or angulations, rotations and torque movements. We can also use this tool to switch the rotation point of the rotation center area. If we do distalization, then a more realistic relocation is on the rotation center area. Here, anyone can choose the most convenient way. You can use both torque and rotational movements.
We can also use a very handy tool of the group selection and switch to six levels. It means that with the control button held down, we can select a group of teeth and work with this group. When working with groups, three types of different relocation options can be used, relative, absolute, and arch. The first type of group relocation is absolute. When a group is moving in absolute mode, all teeth in the selected group will move in the same coordinate system as the lead tooth. The leader is the first selected tooth on which the gizmo is enabled. It means that the teeth will exactly follow the lead tooth. They will perform exactly the same movements that the leading tooth makes, in the same coordinate plane that it has. If we select relative mode, then we will see that all teeth selected in this segment will perform the same movement as the leading one but each tooth will perform this movement in its local coordinate system. For example, if this tooth is standing this way, its coordinate system has a slight difference from the leading one. And if we select a group and, for example, move them to the buccal side, then we see how this tooth goes in its coordinate system. This is very convenient when different situations occur in which the teeth are in different coordinate systems. The third system that we have is arch. It represents the movement of the entire group of teeth allocated behind the leading one along the dental arch. Let's reset all back to the initial state, and now we can do the following. Rotate this tooth a little to align in the group. We have arch mode selected, then we select a group of teeth and move towards distalization. Next. We enter this tooth, which stands outside the dentition, and begin to align, both with group and individual movement. By default, if you enter a collision, then the indicator is automatically displayed in the viewport. Blue indicators, i.e. positive distance, are displayed only when this mode is activated. You can turn it off to not see other distances. After we have entered this tooth into the dentition, we can also use grid lines to make a small intrusion in the anterior area, since we have six teeth in the extrusion position. So, we also select a group of teeth and make an intrusion. Next, we can individually set each tooth in the desired position. The software also has various options for choosing the background color as you like. You can choose the ones that are convenient for you. Align on the grid and level the rest of the dentition. Occlusal map is displayed by default on the active tooth where you have the gizmo enabled. If you need an always on full occlusal map, then you can activate the contacts mode.
In this mode, you constantly see the entire occlusal map on all T. We are now doing preliminary leveling. Then we will start working with collisions and spaces. The main window is the treatment plan. Here, we see how information is displayed and, by default, while we have not yet applied any stepping, one aligner is installed in the program. Now, at the moment, we do not need to immediately apply global stepping. We will first align all the teeth, and then we will turn on the treatment plan. On the upper jaw, we plan to align the center line, as the upper center has shifted due to the long absence of these teeth. Here, it is planned to remove the root with subsequent prosthetics. Here, in the future, we will install pontics. Here, we will also use group selection in order to quickly move a large enough group of teeth. Before we apply a group move to set the center lines to its normal position, we need first to level the segment that we will move. There is a crown here, so we will not touch it. There is space here that we can use to move around. We look at the center. We need to fully get it done, so here, in addition to having space to move, we will need to use separation. We are not looking at collision and spaces now. Now it is necessary to level the dentition and set the teeth in the desired position. It is also planned to make a separation on the lower incisors. After we have placed all the teeth approximately in the desired position, we can proceed to global stepping. 
create a step by which the value of movement of the teeth will be divided. And after that, you will see all the information on the required number of liners. Global stepping can be applied directly in the treatment plan window. By clicking on the stepping button, all six different types of movements, torque, slash, angulation, rotate, extrusion, intrusion, and translate are displayed and average numbers are set, which are usually used in practice. You can change them. After we click apply, we see the step calculation. In treatment plan, we can switch between the upper and lower jaws. If you look at the top, we have the numbers of the teeth from the bottom, the time. In other words, these are aligners directly at each moment of time. There are eight aligners. The calculation is as follows. Eight aligners on the upper jaw, 16 on the lower jaw. All movements that each specific tooth produces are interpreted as a segment that is stretched at some point in time from 0 to 2, from 0 to the second aligner. These segments include all six types of movements that we set in stepping. Between each of the teeth, we see red gradients. The gradients directly mark the collision that occur in the intermediate stages. The gradient has an intensity so you can roughly calculate when it starts and when it ends. The gradient can be displayed in the classic form and as separate lines with different widths depending on the value. The most important information in each collision is its maximum value. It means that between each pair of teeth, for example, in this case between the 11th and 21st, we see a gradient that is practically stretched for the entire lifetime, for the entire duration from 0 to the 8th aligner. Its maximum value is underlined with a red line. In other words, the place where it reaches the maximum value. On the 5th aligner between the 11th and 22nd tooth, there will be their collision of 0.55 millimeters. We can also observe this in the viewport, where we can basically see all the collisions that occur at an intermediate point in time. Also, information about these collisions is displayed on the indicators in red. If we move to the fifth, we see that the maximum value of the collision between these two teeth occurs precisely on the fifth aligner. This is very convenient in order to change the trajectory of the teeth. Normally, we have two points, A and B. Point A is the initial position of the tooth. Point B is where the tooth moves. Normally, the software applies the shortest distance, a straight line. It means that the tooth moves directly to that point. Naturally, at the moment, when it moves to point B, it can collide with other teeth. In our software, intermediate points change very actively. With this point, you can change the trajectory of the teeth. 
make it complicated, bypassing collisions. We will do just that now. For now, we need to start, for example, with the lower jaw. In any case, we will try to bypass the collisions to begin with. We are not looking at any sequences. At the moment, we understand that there is a simultaneous movement of these five teeth. Additionally, the frontal sector moves. The aligner will not be able to create the movement because there will be a kickback. And most likely, if we leave such a treatment plan at some of the intermediate stages, the aligner will not fit because the aligner will not be able to push back so many teeth at the same time. If we look at all segments of the trajectory, they all start with zero aligner. In other words, all movements that are made on the lower jaw begin simultaneously with the first aligner. You can change the sequence by bodily moving the segment. If we look at this segment, we will see the following. In the lower jaw, these are teeth from 43 to 47. We see that they all begin to move at the same time. We understand that to begin with, in order to create such a movement, we first need to move the 47th, then the 46th, and only then gradually connecting the remaining teeth. We can immediately eliminate the movement, for example, by initially displacing the movement of the 46th tooth. We click on the gap and move it, for example, to the fourth aligner. Thus, we tell the system that the 47th tooth will move from zero to the fourth aligner and the 46th tooth will move from the 4th to the 9th aligner. We can see it right away. In this way, the movement that we are now creating, it is more feasible and realistic. Next, we should wait until the 46th tooth comes to place, or, at the last moment, connect the other teeth. We move the trajectory of the 45th to the 9th or 8th aligner. We also have to move the trajectory of the 44th tooth. Thus, of course, we automatically increase the number of aligners. We move some teeth in succession and thus there is no way we can bypass the increase in aligners. For example, then we can add the 43rd tooth. Now we will have a movement of the 47th, then the 46th, and then the rest of the teeth will slowly begin to move the 45th, 44th, and 43rd. After we roughly align the sequence, at the very last moment, we need to decide where we will do the separation and where we will bypass this collision. Now we have set it for the last moment of time. At the last moment of time, we can remove the collision directly only by separation. It is necessary to do either decollision or separation. In the program, separation is done automatically. When you click on the separation button, the following happens. The program looks at the values that are in the negative state at the last moment of time and separates exactly by that value, but round it up.
In other words, if we have 0.19, then the separation will be 0.2. If we have 0.36, then it will be 0.4. This is an activation. And after we activate the separation mode, in the future, the program does all separations automatically. With a separation already done, if you move a tooth, the previous separation will be reset and a new one will be generated. We will now come to this issue. Before applying separations and getting rid of collisions, the software has a very handy tool that allows you to quickly solve the problem with spaces and collision values. This is our space editor, which has three states and which can use different configurations. Left justify configuration, right justify configuration, and justify justify configuration. In this case, we can use this tool to conveniently solve the situation. For example, we put the central incisor in the desired position. We do not want to move this central incisor anywhere now. We want the central incisor to be fixed here. And based on this position, all the problems associated with these collisions and some spaces in this dentition have been solved. We should take into account that we have a crown here that we cannot move. If there were no crown here, we could select all the teeth in a given row by pressing that one button and all problems would be solved. We will do it in two steps. All movements that occur, including the gizmo, you can only make at the last moment in time for this jaw. If I move the gizmo knob to some non end time, because on the maxilla the end time is the eighth aligner, so if I move that to the sixth aligner, I can't activate the gizmo because the system won't understand what you're about to do. Either you are going to put an intermediate point or change. The end position can only change at the end time. Approximately on the upper jaw, it is the eighth. On the lower jaw, it is the 26th. Naturally, when you are on the 26th, you also do not have the opportunity to turn on the knob. We move to the eighth aligner and do the following. The tooth on which the gizmo is turned on is the leader. We hold down control button and select four teeth up to our crown. There are several variations. For example, we have four different collisions. Moreover, these collisions have completely different values. Here, 0.55 and 0.53. Here already, 40 and 120 microns. Naturally, if we now press separation, then these will be completely different separation values. And in the clinic, of course, it is more convenient to normalize all these separations, bring them into a single form. Let's make them 0.3 each. For this task, we can use the width configuration. If I now press the width button, then we see how the system moved the remaining teeth, leaving this tooth in place and made it so that between these three teeth, the collision value was as close as possible to each other. For now, if I do a separation, all separations will be 0.4. If we select an even larger group of teeth and I use the width configuration, 
we see that it moves even more. That the system makes two nearby teeth of the same size here. It means that at the moment, the separation will be 0.4 slash 0.4 here and 0.3 slash 0.3 here. This is a very handy tool to spread quickly without having to move the gizmo in very small steps. Also, this tool allows us to close some spaces very easily. For example, there are four teeth. Between the 17th and 16th tooth, we have a collision of 0.52. Here, we have a space of 1.13. And here, we have a collision again. Now, I want to solve the problem with one click. We can do the following. I chose the last tooth as the leader. Gizmo turns on on the last tooth. When we press left, it turns out that we align to the left. When we press right, we align to the right. Let's use this tool and see. I press left and as you can see, firstly, the collision that was between 17th and 16th was gone. The space that was between 16th and 15th was closed, and the collision that was between 14th and 15th has also gone. So with one click, we very quickly resolve this problem. If you need to align to the right without moving this tooth, but distalizing the rest, solving all the problems within the segment, then you can choose right. At the moment, I am satisfied with the separation, which I want to do, and we have fixed the central line to the maximum in this case. Now, we move to the lower jaw, and on the lower jaw, we also see the very different collisions that we have. We also see here that there is a small correction that we need to make, and we also plan to make a separation in this segment. We will not do separation in the chewing area on molars, so we choose this tooth as a leader. We select the group and we align it to the left. I press left and it turns out that all problems are solved from the leading tooth to the left. All collisions are gone. We have four collisions left, which we will solve precisely by separation. Here we can select our traditional tool to even out the amount by which we will make the separations. Here, in this case, we have very well distributed collisions that in general, the separation will be 0.3. Now we begin with a separation. Because if we start solving collisions now, and then we make a separation, it will be wrong. Because the separation will already remove half of these collisions, we activate separation mode. After we activated the separation mode, we see how the collisions left at the last moment in time. Here, there is sometimes a need to slightly adjust a particular tooth. We can easily do this by selecting arch. We move it a little. We rid of the collision in the viewport and the treatment plan. As you can see, we are now at the last moment of time. And at the last moment of time, we have no collision indicators. Now we can start solving problems with collisions. First of all, 
the separation. By default, separations are set at time zero. Initially, before starting the treatment itself, the doctor will make all the indicated separations that were selected on the upper and lower jaws. The separation value can be edited from the treatment plan by simply clicking on the separation indicator. And thus, you can increase and decrease it very easily. You can see how the intermediate collision, if any, changes. You can drag and drop to change the point in time at which you want to make it. By default, this is the zero movement in the program. You just click on the indicator and move it to the time you want to do it. It's very easy and simple. After you have moved, you can see how the collision data changes. Now, I mean that before the third aligner, we will have a collision of 0 0.1. And after the separation, we will be done on the third aligner. We will leave everything as it is by default from time zero and start solving problems with intermediate collisions. First of all, we see that some segments of the trajectory are colored red. This color indicates that there is an excess in some type of movement step that you specified. Some of these numbers are exceeded. You can see this by selecting the speed, max indicator inside here. In this case, the system shows that red is approximation, and the red numbers indicate that you have already exceeded the limits. Here, the maximum linear speed is 0.22 and we have 0 0.25. You will see an approach indication and we can see the excess. The speed of tooth movement can also be very easily changed by clicking on the endpoint and dragging it down. You see how very easily the speeds at which these teeth will move will change. It is very important to understand here that this segment also represents the same point A and B. This point is the initial position of the teeth and the final position of the tooth. And all trajectories are combined into this indicator. You can look at each speed separately, mesiodistal or linear. You can also see angulation, rotation, and all other values. With speed max, the system looks at the maximum of these types of movements and displays it as the maximum. After we have changed on the lower jaw, we can see that there is also an excess of some step on the upper jaw. We can pull down and easily solve this problem. Now we can start solving problems with intermediate collisions. I also want to mention that some users like to see a separated mesh in the viewport. By default, when you apply the separation, you see that the teeth is separated. If you don't want to see the separated teeth, you can click the separated teeth button and all separations will be hidden with their values saved. You just won't see them in the viewport. I keep them for now.
On the upper jaw, I switched original. You can display information. And here, we see that there are no critical distalizations. We just move four teeth using separations. So we cannot change the zero points in time, which means we do not change the sequence. If we can keep the sequence, we don't have very many problems left. We have a collision, and the collision that appears is on the second aligner, and it is between the 17th and 16th. As we said a little earlier, all movements of the teeth can only be made at the end of intermediate points, which are set in the middle. I will show this on the segment itself and at the end points. If you move to the 14th tooth, for example, and set the timeline to the last point of the 14th tooth, you can enable the gizmo. This is a rule, or you can just go down, which means that you are at the end of each of the segments. And so you can choose any tooth. We choose the end moment of the 17th tooth and just change it a bit. Naturally, after you change its position, the trajectory also changes. If you pull back a lot, you can see the excess, which means that here at such speeds, the steps will be 1.11, So after you made a change, you can see that we have 0 0.15 here. We set it back. We no longer have a collision. It means that on the upper jaw, the teeth do not collide anywhere and there are no excesses anywhere. So we can finish with the upper jaw. You need to check all contacts. We can see small super contacts on the teeth, but we will not dwell on them. The problem is, in principle, easily solved there. As soon as I made a small intrusion, we can see an overspeed, and the overspeed can be very easily solved by shifting the speed. In other words, slowing it down a little. The separation is also deleted by selecting the indicator and pressing the delete button. Naturally, after I made a small intrusion, a small collision appeared here too. As I said earlier, we have the separation mode activated. When the separation mode is activated, any collisions will automatically be resolved at the end time by means of separation. Here, we no longer plan to do a separation. We can display all the information about the distances and fine tune the values that we need. We can see here, and there are slightly larger spaces between the teeth. And we can always correct this without any problems. Now we will move on to the lower jaw. Our lower jaw is much more complicated because the teeth make quite complex and large movements. So we will have to solve a lot of problems with collisions. Here we have started to move the sequence. Since we cannot achieve the simultaneous movement of these five teeth, therefore, we did such work a little earlier. We moved the 47th tooth from the sixth aligner and approximately from the fourth aligner, the next one gets involved. Here it is. Better to move it down a little so that the 47th reaches the end point. And at this moment, the movement of the 46th begins. And then we can see the movement of the 45th. If we move below the starting point of the previous tooth, naturally we see a collision. This means that the 44th and the 45th teeth will collide. 
because they should, on the contrary, go in sequence. This problem is solved simply by moving the moment of time slightly higher. We can start from one end to look at the collision that occurs between the 34th and the 33rd tooth. Here we can see a collision that arises as a result of its rotation. This tooth is rotated and at the same time, another tooth is rotated. Here you can, for example, set an intermediate point, thereby changing the trajectory. We have to see if we have any empty space where we could move, thereby changing the trajectory. But at this point in time, we don't have such large spaces. And basically, if we look, the tooth on the right has 60 microns. The tooth on the left has 70 microns. We can try to change the collision in the following way. We select 34th tooth, which is slightly higher, this point in time. And by double clicking the left mouse button, we set an intermediate point. When we set an intermediate point, we see the gizmo turns on thereby allowing us to create some other trajectory. Conveniently, by seeing neighboring distant measurements, we can make very small moves. When I changed it, I literally shifted it by 20 microns. And now we can see that the collision has changed its value. The maximum of collisions has moved to the last point in time. This is very convenient and makes it possible to use additional spaces. We put a dot here and we move the collision to the fifth point in time. But at the fifth point of time, we see that the distances are already 80 and 130 microns and the existing collision is 50 microns. Therefore, we can very easily click on the same 34th tooth and, having such a space, already get an additional smaller distance. It turns out that we have now reduced the collision value. But another collision has arisen. This collision between the 34th and 35th teeth is very easily removed by slowing down the movement of the 35th. And that's it. The collision disappears. Its movement has a lower speed and this tooth has time to turn. Therefore, we do not get this collision. We are left with a collision that shows us 30 microns and here we already have the opportunity to move this tooth. We click on the 33rd, the gizmo turns on and we eliminate this collision. Wait a second, we have to find that middle ground. Here, we do not exclude it. The space is very small, so we can't rule out like that. We will need to try to go the other way. Here, we saw an excess, so we made a slight extension, and the collision that occurred in the area of the intermediate point was gone. We still have one more collision that occurs between the 34th and the 33rd teeth. We need to eliminate this collision. We also have a collision between 32nd and the 31st.
Let's try to go here now. And from here, we will try to exclude this collision. We put an intermediate point on the 31st tooth and thus we have 170 microns here. We have a lot of space. You can see that the collision is gone. Now we have space in this place. Naturally, we can put on the 32nd and now we can put on the 33rd. And as you can see, we have eliminated all collisions. It is very easy seeing all the spaces that are available. To get rid of collisions, we now have a clear treatment plan. The front teeth do not collide and we see all the values that are there. Now, we have probably the most difficult collision, which occurs due to the fact that this tooth is put in the dentition in a straight line. Naturally, it moves right away, and at this moment, we see a collision. Here, we will also need to look at the collision by the maximum values. We jump right over here, and we see a collision at 0.51. That's a pretty big collision. Here, you need to understand that if this collision value is more than 10 microns, then you need to exclude this collision by trying to move the tooth itself in the opposite direction. It means that we will not be able to take 0.5 millimeters somewhere on the jaw to move them, all in order to try to bring this tooth to its place. We can't do it here because we already have distalization here and we cannot accelerate the movement of some tooth. Therefore, in this case, we will move the tooth at some point in time, or rather, we will take it at the final point in time. Although there is 0.14 distance here, we will simply move one tooth at a time. We can see how the intermediate value of the collision changes. Moreover, at the moment, I am moving the tooth at the final moment of time. Thereby, as we can see, the value of separation is decreasing. At the moment, it is not relevant because initially the tooth stands sideways to it. And no matter how much we make this separation, this movement will still lead to a collision. The only option is to see a collision greater than 100 or 200 microns. Then it is better to move this tooth in the opposite direction. Now we are still shifting and here we already see a small gap. We see 27, but we will see on the other hand that the separation has increased. We will now try to distribute it. By four, five, we see how the separation is reset after the move. And we see how a new indication appears. If you directly shift it to a positive moment in time, all the separation goes away. And we can see the actual value. We have reached 0.19 and now we need to try to find a place in order to exclude this collision. We have very little space, as you can see, if we sum it all up. 
Only one rule can be applied here. This is some kind of temporary movement here and a return back. But in this case, this is not relevant because we do not have the opportunity to move this tooth to the side and then return it. Another of the options that we will need to apply is most likely increasing the separation in this direction. Now we will start creating complex trajectories in order to eliminate this collision. First of all, we see that this tooth immediately starts moving in that direction, although we have some space that we can use. For example, moving back. We select the 43rd tooth, now we will look at the 42nd. Let's try to increase the movement of the 43rd. Here we can see only an increase in collision. We slow down movement of 42nd and further reduce its speed. Accordingly here, we can see a certain decrease in the value of the collision, so we can stretch this plan and at some point, we will see a collision. So we're going back to 12 microns and now at this moment, we have shifted the place of occurrence of this collision. But if we look over here, we can see that we have space and now we can create some action. Accordingly, we will try to use these 190 microns and thus, we see that the collision has decreased and gone to the 19th aligner. Here we can see two collisions that we can resolve. There are 90 and 50 microns here. Let's try to go that way. First of all, we will try to eliminate this collision by shifting the 42nd by some value. We have the opportunity to make a small separation. We also set the point to the 43rd, but we pull it back a little bit. In other words, we slow down its movement to point B, and thus we see how the point shifts, how the collision goes to the minimum value, and now we can try to eliminate it completely. To begin with, we will eliminate the present collision, and then we can eliminate this collision. Just move it a little more.
here we have, this is a very complex trajectory. So we have to create a lot of intermediate points. And this is normal work because we remove a lot of problems. There's less than 10 microns being captured here. So we don't see the color indication. But here we can see an excess, so we will need to slightly change its speed. Here we have 10 microns. Here also 10 microns. The last, that's it, 43rd and 44th. That's it, we're done. The result is a very complex segment with many intermediate points. But in this case, you can safely apply this treatment plan because you can be sure that there will be no intermediate collisions. Now we have two Pontics to install and we can look further at attachments. While installing Pontics, here you can activate the Pontic mode, you will have a separate window in which you can choose two options. Either use teeth from a library or take mirror copies, for example, of the patient's teeth. For instance, let's try to use mirror copies here. You select a tooth you want to copy. We'll take the 22nd to begin with, and we indicate where we'll put them. In this case, we will place them between the 14th and 11th, so we will take the 12th. We click on this Pontic, and we see how the gizmo and the model itself appear. This model has a root. This is done for convenience so that we can be sure that it goes into the gum. Here we see that this Pontic needs to be mirrored. Here the tooth is located so.
You can activate the menu for the Pontic by pressing the right mouse button. And you have three options. Mirroring, deleting and scaling, resizing. We turn it around. After we have turned it around, we begin to install it in the place where we want to install it. By default, the Pontic starts with the first aligner. You can scroll through some points in time to roughly understand where you should place it. It is better to consider the last moment of time. You install in this way, look at the length. You can turn on the scaling on the gizmo and drag on a specific area. You can easily reduce or enlarge it in order to make its border more even. That's it. We have installed one Pontic and a little later I will tell you how to manage it, how to change it, the time of its appearance, how you can make it appear at a certain moment, then disappear, etc. Now we will install the second Pontic. We will also select a patient. Select tooth number 23. And, since this root will be removed, this tooth we will place directly on the root. We will indicate that we do not place it in the gaps, but directly on the tooth. The program allows you to place both on the tooth and in between. We also install it in approximately the right place. It will immediately need to be scaled and it will also be mirrored. Let's first of all reduce the size of this Pontic. In this way. Now, you can reduce the size of this Pontic. We can easily see if it will interfere or not, since occlusion is also displayed on the Pontic. That's it. We installed the Pontic. This means that if we start scrolling through its lifetime, we will see that the Pontic somehow goes down. This is because when you press Add Pontic at install time, the program doesn't know where to start. It means that, by default, the first point in time starts at the time of installation, where you started. In the treatment plan, pontics are marked near the tooth and are directly indicated by the letter P. So, 13P1 is this pontic, and 12P1 is this pontic. The pontics also have their own trajectories. The pontics also have dots. For example, we will take the last point. It means that we can select the previous points and delete them thereby choosing the last point as the desired position of the Pontic throughout the treatment.
if you want some specific position changed from normal, you can click to set the timeline to some desired position, thereby creating movement. When you move, you can see how the path lengthens and an additional point is created. This means that initially it will stand there and then move here. Thus, you can remove the upper point and this Pontic will already be there. Based on this, for example, you understand that from the first aligner to the second, the teeth are shifting and you want to extend this Pontic here. You can click on the gizmo and put it here. So on the first aligner, it stands there. On the second, it starts to shift and on the third, it comes to that moment. It is very convenient to move the Pontic according to the treatment plan, following the teeth so that there is no space and that there is not a big gap between the teeth and the Pontic. For now, that's all. Further, we will work with attachments in a separate video.